I was recently given a CSV file that was more than a gig in size. It had more than 18 million records, and I was asked to import this into a SQL database. Now, I wasn't using this for a Laravel application. In fact, I wasn't even using PHP. The language and platform that I was using has tools built in to make that a trivial thing. You just feed it the data and say, do it, and it's done. And it made me think, what if I needed to do this for a Laravel application? Because PHP doesn't have anything built in. Laravel doesn't have anything built in. In fact, it's a pretty manual process if you want to bulk insert data into a database. So I thought, hey, let's look at how we can do this. So this is the first file that we are going to be working with. It's called small set. This has a million records, and there's just six fields. So this is data from a meter reading or a gauge reading. So the first field is the date. The second field is the time. The third field is the pressure for the first gauge. The fourth field is the temperature at the gauge at that time. Then we have a second gauge that we have the pressure and the temperature for that gauge. And of course, there's a million records of these. And we want to import this into a database table, which, well, it's basically the same thing. The table is called gauge readings. We have an ID because every table in a SQL database needs a primary key. You can fight me on that. Then we have the date, the time, and then the pressure temp for the first gauge and the pressure and temp for the second gauge. So basically the same layouts, the only difference is the primary key. Now, one thing to note about the data in the CSV, the date is in a month, day, year format, which means that we will need to convert that into a year, month, day format. But we can get started by doing something like this. Maybe as we are reading the file, and we can do that using f get csv, we can pass in the file handle. We don't need to specify the length, but we do need to specify the separator. And as long as this doesn't return false, then we will keep reading the file. And for every Every row that we read, we could go ahead and say we will take that data and insert that into our database. And I'm just going to paste this in so that we take the data from the row, which is just a normal index-based array, and then we feed that into an array that has the column names. So here we can see that log date is being converted into the year-month-day format. That's what our database needs. But very straightforward, and this will work. It'll take a while. While, but it'll work if we start running this. Oh, and when the page is finished inserting the data, we will see this message finished database insert. So let's get this working and we can go to the database and we can start looking at how many rows are written. So we can see that now we have uh, 3000 rows, 6000 rows. It looks like it's going fast, but really th this is very slow. And we are going to reach the 60 second execution limit because, well, this is just going so slow. And, you know, this is a very memory efficient approach because as we are reading the file and for every row, we are just writing that out to the database. But any IO, which is input output, is going to bottleneck your application. And in this particular case, we are making a lot of database statements. For every row that we read in that CSV file, we are sending that data off to the database. That takes a lot of time, and it's going to take a lot of time in order to get all 1 million rows. And in fact, we've reached our limit now. We're at 35,000 rows. If we look at the browser, we can see that we reached the 60-second execution limit. Now, we can get around that by just changing the execution limits. We can either change that in the INI, or we could use INI set, change the max execution time to something that would be suitable. Uh, we could do 10 minutes. I I would think we would need something a little bit longer than that. But this is a memory efficient approach. It's not a computational efficient approach. So then what could be more efficient from a computational standpoint is if we read the entire file, store that into an array, and then we can chunk that array out to the database. We can say that we could have a chunk size of like a thousand. The idea being that it would be a lot faster to send one statement 
statement to the database to insert a thousand rows than it is to send a thousand statements to the database to insert the same thousand rows. So the way that we could do that is pretty simple. We could say that we'll have this data variable and we will simply add in our array to that data. Let's create data up here and initialize it. And then after we read that file, then we could have a for each to where we will chunk the array and we could pick something. Of course, th th there's not necessarily a science to this. There is definitely some trial and error to the most efficient chunk size, but let's do a thousand because I know that that's going to be okay. Well, it's not going to be okay in this case because we'll see here in a moment, but then we will uh, write this chunk to the database and that would execute a lot faster. I think we're good to go there. Uh, let's clear out the database so that we have a fresh database to start with. And then we'll go to the browser. Let's refresh. And we're not even going to look at the database because here, well, there it goes. We don't see anything in here and we should be seeing a message that says finished database insert. If we look at the database, there's nothing here either. If we look at the console, we will see that we exceed our memory limit. Our memory limit is uh, about 512 meg. It tried to allocate 32,000 more bytes. So one way that we could get around this is to just change our I and I. We can set the memory limit to something that would make this work. If we set this to a gig, I know that this will work in that case. So we can do that. We can start this running again, and then we can go to the database. We can start refreshing here. And as we start getting data, here we go, 42,000 rows, 133. This is a lot faster than it was doing it one row at a time. In fact, this will be 25, 26, 27 seconds, but we will eventually get to the point that all 1 million rows will be in that database and then we're done, we're good, hooray, there we go. So we can take a look at the console, we can see that that was 26 seconds and that's fantastic, we got that done, that's wonderful, except I don't necessarily want to have to change the memory limit. I don't want to have to set anything differently. I want to be able to work within the confines of the limits of our application or whatever environment that we are in. So if executing one statement at a time is memory efficient, but it's not computationally efficient, but reading the entire file and then chunking it is computationally efficient, but it's not memory efficient, maybe we can mix the two together so that we can read the file and as we reach a chunk size, we can chunk it out, write it to the database, then go back to reading till we get to another chunk, chunk it out, and, and so on and so forth. So that essentially we will need to write our own function. So uh, let's do that. Inside of our app, I'm going to create, uh, let's have a helpers folder, and then I'm going to call this array helpers.php. And that namespace will be be simply app helpers. Then we will have our class of array helpers. And we don't need an instance method here. We could just have a static method that we could use because we don't need to create an instance at all. So we will have our function, let's call it chunk file, so that we will accept the path of the file that we want to chunk out. But then we need something to generate essentially the array that we need. Uh, we could just lift this out and use this directly inside of our helpers array, but that makes this function specific to this particular database. And I would prefer to have something that we could use for any database table. So let's say that we will have a callable generator and that is going to generate the array that we would need to have the columns and their appropriate values. So we will have the generator, then we will have an int for the chunk size. And then from there, we just need to lift some of our existing code, like opening the file, creating our data array, but then we also need to close that file. And we could use the same loop that we used before, that while loop, except that we would need a counter because we would need to know whenever we reach the chunk size to chunk that out. So, I mean, yes, we could do that with a while loop, but if we use a for loop, we get a counter built in. So let's do that. We'll have a for loop 
we'll have our counter. I use the variable name of II for my counters. That's just a personal preference because if I need to search for that variable, II stands out a lot more than just I. So there you go. Uh, we'll initialize that as one. Our condition is going to be the same thing so that we are going to read each row one at a time, and then we will increment our counter. So that's the first thing we will do is call generator. We will pass in the row and we will add that to our data array. But then we need to chunk it out whenever we reach the chunk size. So one way that we could do that is to just count our data array. However, I want to do this. We are going to take our counter and divide it by our chunk size. And if the remainder is zero, then we know that we have a multiple of our chunk size. So we know that then we will need to yield our data. And this is much faster and much more efficient than counting the array because there is some computational overhead involved with counting an array. A simple arithmetic operation is going to be a lot better. So after we yield the data, we want to reset the data so that we can fill it up with more rows. And then after we exit the loop, we need to check if our data is not empty because if it's not, then we need to yield that out. And then Finally, we will close the file. Okay, so let's go back over this just to make sure I didn't miss anything. So we have chunk file, we accept the file path, the generator for our model, and then the chunk size. We open up the file, we initialize our data, then we loop. And as we are looping, we are reading each individual row, storing that inside of our data array. We are checking to see if it's time to yield our chunk. If it is, we yield that out, we reset the data, and then we keep iterating over until after we exit the loop, we check if our data is not empty. If so, we yield it, and then we close the file. That's fine. That should work. So now here, we don't need this while, but we do need our generator, don't we? So let's just do this. Let's have generate row. We'll create a closure that is going to accept the row. And then we will simply return our data like that. So that's now, instead of calling array chunk, we will use our array helpers and chunk file. We will pass in the small path. Our chunk size is going to be a thousand, but we do need to use that generate row as our second argument. And that should work fine. I think that's going to work. So uh, let's make sure our INI settings are default. We're good to go there. Let's reset our database and then we will execute this code. And we will see that th this is probably going to execute a little bit faster, but we'll get that going. Let's take a look at the database. Let's refresh. We can see that we are at 288,000. This is going pretty quickly, just like it did before, to the point that we will get to a million rows. And as we can see, this is memory efficient. It's also computationally efficient. And we can see the execution time. So that took 25 seconds. So I would be okay with this, except that we could improve this a little bit more. Now, in, in this particular case, it's not going to be that big of a deal because I don't have any foreign keys or anything like that. But if you are inserting data into a database table that either has indexes or if there are some foreign key constraints, that could slow down this whole process because the database also has to take that into account as data is being inserted. So one thing that we could do before we insert anything would be to use our DB facade and execute a SQL statement. Actually, we need to execute multiple ones so that we can set the foreign key checks option to zero. But then we also want to disable any keys that we might have. So so we will alter our table, which is called gauge readings, and we will disable keys. Then we will execute our bulk insert, and then we essentially need to undo those changes so that we enable keys, and then we set the foreign key checks to one. Now I'm going to execute that, but through the magic of editing, we'll see that, well, that took about the same amount of time, but then again, I don't have any keys, I don't have any indexes built over 
this table. But if you do have indexes, especially if you are using Laravel Scout, then you might want to do something like this to where you would use your model. So that would be gauge reading in my case. Then you would call the without syncing to search method. What this is going to do is essentially turn off the indexing so that inside of this closure, anything we execute here will be done without the indexing. So there we can turn off the foreign key checks, disable the keys, execute our bulk insert, and then re-enable those settings. Now, once again, this is only useful if you are using Laravel Scout. So if you're not using Scout, and if your model does not have the searchable trait, then you don't have to worry about this without syncing to search. Now, there's one other way that we can bulk insert data, and that is specific for a MySQL or a MariaDB database, and that is load data in file. Basically, we tell the database, hey, we have this file that we want to load into a particular table. That file can be on the client or it can be on the database server. In my case, it's one and the same. However, it is important to make that distinction because sometimes you might not always have access to the database server. Now, we don't use our model here. We use the DB facade and we call the statement method. And this is going to be a multi-line statement. So we will start off with load data in file. Now, if this is all we do, we are telling the database that the file resides on the server. If we want to specify that the file resides on the client, we say load data local. In most cases, I would say that we would want to use local because I would think that in most cases, we might not necessarily have access to the database server. So load data local in file, then we specify the path. But the path needs to be escaped so that it can be used inside of a SQL statement. So I'm going to create a variable called escaped path. And we will use our DB facade because we need to get the PDO, so that we can quote escape the path. And uh, that was the small path variable. So that in our statement, then we can specify the escaped path just like that. So that's great. Now we need to tell the database where we want to load that data into. So we say into table, and then we specify our table of gauge readings. But then we need to give it a little bit of information about the data that we want to import, or at least the format that it is in. So the fields are terminated by a comma, because this is a CSV. The lines are terminated by a new line. And so that's good. But then we also need to think about the data that we have inside of our file and the table that we want to insert into, because this is going to take our data from the file and it's going to try to put that starting at the first column, which is our ID. So it's going to try to put the date into ID, the time into date, everything is going to be one off. So essentially we need to tell the database in what order we want to put this data. And so we do that here inside of a set of parentheses to where we could say log date and then log time. And then we would have the gauge one temp. No, it's a uh, pressure is first followed by the temp. And then we have the gauge to pressure and temp fields. So that's what we need to do. But remember that our date is not in the correct format. The file has the date in month, day, year. We need it in year, month, day. So we need to convert the date value. So what we are going to do then is instead of saying log date as our first column here, we are going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it date var. And so on the next line, we are going to say to set log date equal to, and then our new date. So we need to convert our date from the CSV into a date that can be inserted into a date column. We can do that using MySQL's string to date function. So then we will pass in the date var, and then we need to specify the format that it is currently in, which is in month slash day slash year. And that's it. So we tell the database, we have this file, we want to load it into this table. The fields and lines are terminated by that. 
the order in which the data should be inserted is there. And then we also need to convert the date into year, month, day. So that should be it. We should be able to go to the browser. Let's run this. This is only going to take a few seconds, maybe five to 10 seconds, and it's going to load all 1 million records. There it's done. So we can take a look at the database. There is our million records, and that ran how fast? Eight seconds. That's pretty darn good. But what about a really large file? You know, we have that large set that has 10 million records. So let's create a large path variable so that we can use that in our in file. I'm not going to worry about clearing out the database. Let's just get this running. Now, this is actually going to time out. So this is a case where, yes, that we would go ahead and change the max execution time. And, you know, for 10 million records, it will take uh, maybe 70, 80 seconds. It's not going to take, you know, 10 times the amount. What was, well, I say that. What was it? Uh, it was eight seconds. It, it could take 80 seconds, it, but it's still, it's extremely fast. It's much faster than anything that we did before, but it will time out but it is going to be inserting that data into the database. In fact, we can take a look. We are currently at 6.5 million rows. So it's working. It's going to time out. Now, you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use the in file to begin with? And yes, absolutely do so. The only thing is that it is not enabled by default. There are a few things that you would need to do. Uh, and if you don't have access to the database server, then you're kind of out of luck unless if the in file has been enabled. So I currently use XAMPP. So let's pull up XAMPP so I can get to the MySQL config. There are two things that you need to add to the config. The first is under the MySQL D, you will need to set the local in file to one. That's the first thing that you would need to do inside of the MySQL config. The second thing is essentially the same thing, but you need to find the MySQL section and set the same thing, local in file equals one. So that's the first thing you need to do. Then inside of your Laravel application, you will need to go to the config folder, open up database, and in the MySQL section, you'll need to add in this line here, this PDO MySQL attribute local in file to true. So of course, this right here is something that you can control. And if that doesn't work, you then have to run a query inside of your database to allow the in file for your database user. My database user is root. So I had to grant file on star.star for everything to my root user. So quite a few things that you have to do in order to make the in file work. However, if you can, then this is really the best way to bulk insert data. Otherwise, your best approach is going to be kind of what we did with this chunk file function. But no matter which way you use, definitely don't do it one statement at a time. That will just take forever.